Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, whale games. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we put out a video similar to this one um, about a, a couple weeks ago or so, and we called it whale games. And there was a decent amount of interest in it. And so I figured, you know, why don't we somewhat regularly talk about it and, and keep track of some of the larger wallets. And so what we're going to do in this video is just provide an update on, on some of these larger wallets. What are they doing? You know, are they buying? Are they selling? And then maybe go look at some on-chain data on the, on the, into the Cryptoverse website. Okay. So the first thing that we have to do when, when talking about on-chain analysis is, is to always remember that the data could be manipulated, okay? Now, I understand that some people would say, well, that since it can be manipulated, is there any value in it? I would argue that there is some value in on-chain analysis. I just think that a lot of us sort of have, we, we, we look at it with a very biased view, right? So like we always want to find reasons to say that it's bullish when sometimes what, we, what we're looking at could be could be something that's happened in prior downtrends, but it, it sounds like a good thing so that we use that to, to sort of rationalize why it's a good thing. Um, but just remember that there's all these caveats to on-chain data. And if I say, you know, I'm gonna use the terminology of buying and selling, but, but do note that it doesn't necessarily mean that, like it could just be transferring from one wallet to another. Um, uh, for what it's worth, I just wanted to, to put those disclaimers and now we can we can jump in. So one of the wallets that we talked about last time was wallet number three. Let me know who you guys think wallet number three is because they currently hold a very modest 126,342 Bitcoin. Now, for, for, for those that are curious, why is, wallet, why is well number three so important? Well, well number one is Binance Cold Wallet and well number two is the Bitfinex Cold Wallet. So it's not really that intriguing to go follow what the cold wallets of some major exchanges are doing what's more interesting is to, to look at this mysterious whale number three and what are they doing okay now in the last video one of the things that i, I mentioned whale number three's actions the last time this was in the last video we're going to get to the more recent stuff in a, in a minute the last time they had sold some Bitcoin, they sold one Bitcoin on, on 12, 14, 2021. Then they got it right back later that day. So I don't really think that counts. The last time they actually sold a significant amount of Bitcoin, they sold 1,500 Bitcoin at 67.5K. 1,500 Bitcoin. Now, I should say a couple things. First of all, that sounds like a lot, and it is a lot, right? 1,500 Bitcoin is, is a ton of Bitcoin. But for a wallet that is holding, you know, 126,000, that's just over over 1% of their Bitcoin. But regardless, they, they, they had a pretty good sell here. We'll call it a sell at 67.5K. Now, we should note that they, they transferred back in 198 Bitcoin, I mean, at, 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 at like $20, uh, at a price twenty dollars lower, and then also they they added back eleven hundred and twenty three Bitcoin at sixty four point one. But I thought that was interesting that at sixty seven point five, right before we started having a more significant pullback, they they offloaded fifteen hundred Bitcoin. Additionally, they went through a series of of transfers out of the wallet uh, back in early October. So if you think about it, that was after we we had the August pump. To like 53k, we had the September pullback to the to the bull market support band, and then in October we sort of shot off. And and during that period where Bitcoin started to shoot off, you can see they offloaded 3,000 here, another 3,000 here, and then another 1,500 here for a total of 7,500 Bitcoin. You know, basically between the prices of 50,000 to 56,000, and then they slowly started adding some of that back uh, over over you know as the as the months went on. Or as the as the weeks went on, but what's interesting is to look back at at what's been going on recently. Okay, because this was one of the ones we were following in the last video, and you can see that they were adding Bitcoin through February, through 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 early February, and I believe this was the last time I when I when I covered it last. All they had done was 
we, we had seen that they had they had bought Bitcoin through February 3rd, or at least transferred it into their wallet on February 3rd, after a series of, of DCAs throughout early 2022, and then they stopped on, on February 3rd. Nothing really happened. And then on March 1st, another 1500 went out on March 1st at a price of around $44,000. Now, if you go and look at, at what was going on with Bitcoin on, on March 1st, that was right here on this, on this green candle. So, you know, they, they basically spent a lot, of, a lot of this time over here accumulating. And then on this candle right here, they offloaded 1,500 Bitcoin. Okay, 1,500. Again, it represents just over about 1% of their stack. And then they were quiet for about six days and they bought back 318 at 38K. So 1,500 offloaded when the price was 44K, added back 318 at when the price was 38.2K, and then added back another 412 Bitcoin at 38.5K on, on March 8th. And then what happened, right? <laughs> Now we're back at, at, at $42,000, right? We're back at $42,000. So, you know, not only, not only did, did whale number three, whoever the mysterious entity is, not only did they, you know, did they spend a lot of early 2022 sort of DCing Bitcoin, they, they transferred out 1500 at the local top, they bought the dip, and now we're waiting, right? We're waiting to see what they're gonna do. So. Let me know what you guys think about whale number three. Maybe we should ask ourselves when, when we're navigating the crypto first, well, what would whale number three do? Um, you can see that, you know, if, if this data is to be trusted, their current profit on all of this is $2 billion. The entire Bitcoin that they have in their wallet is, is, is worth $5.2 billion. So, and they first started accumulating back in 2019 fairly aggressive DC air, right? I mean, fairly aggressive, okay? And you can see that the, the wallet has just been adding Bitcoin. I mean, it, it sometimes sells off some, like like over here. By the way, you know, when, when Bitcoin went to 42K, you can see this this whale here started to, started to sell some off in this, in this area. There were a lot of people that did, including myself, okay? And the reason was because Bitcoin was up like 12X, or 10x in a relatively short period of time. It made sense. It's not like we knew it was going to go. I mean, of course, I only sold a, a portion of my Bitcoin. I still left a, a, you know, the, the bulk of it to be sold at, at higher prices. Um, but what's interesting is, is that if you look at, say, like the long-term holders of Bitcoin, there were a lot of long-term holders that were actually selling over here. I'll talk about that at the end of the video. So that's well number three. And, and we'll continue to see what they, what they continue to do. Now, we can go look at this whale. Um, I'm not really sure, you know, who they are uh, or, or what they're doing, but I mean, these are some pretty big transfers into this wallet starting starting in late 2021. Um, and, and nothing has gone out, it's been in only. And, and you can see that in February 18th, they, 9,000 Bitcoin came in. And then as recently as about five days ago, another 5,100 Bitcoin came in at around $39,000. Now, unfortunately, again, if the data is to be trusted, we don't really know if they're buying it or just transferring it from another wallet, but if it's to be trusted as a buy, they're currently down $306 million. So if you thought you were having a bad day, um, 306 million is a lot to be down. But let's continue on. You know, there, there's some that are a little bit more modest in their, in their DCAs of Bitcoin, picking up, you know, 66 Bitcoin today, picking up 41 Bitcoin a few days ago. Uh, but this one is, has been slowly adding here after a fairly large transfer in of over 12,000 at $47,000. So you can see that they've just been slowly adding here throughout mid to late February and early March. Just more and more Bitcoin are coming in. And again, if the data is to be trusted, they're currently down about $80 million. Now, not all whales are accumulating, okay? This is one of those things where it would be easy for me to just show you the whales that are accumulating and not the ones that are potentially offloading some. Again, we don't know how, how reliable the data is, but if we can continue on, you can see that there are some that are, I mean, there's transfers basically going in constantly and out constantly. 
And it's hard to really keep track of what's going on, but if you just go up to the top, you can see that the total number of Bitcoin that this, that this wallet specifically is controlling, it has been dwindling, okay, um, over the last, I mean, basically since, since February. It, it, the, the amount of Bitcoin that this wallet has been holding has just been slowly going down. So basically, it, it, it's just like a slow bleed out of the wallet. So I don't know if they are, you know, just in a, in a distribution phase themselves where they're, you know, they're, they're just systematically, you know, continuing to offload Bitcoin or what. Could be something completely different considering considering how frequent these are. I mean, these are all on March 9th, right? I don't really know what's going on. But you can see that this wallet is slowly depreciating in terms of how much Bitcoin it, it owns. And then here's another wallet as well uh, that has been slowly going down uh, from, from ha having a local top here and total Bitcoin owns back in late January. And then since then, they've, they've actually offloaded some of their bags um, and have not really accumulated much. I mean, every once in a while, you'll see a little bit come in, but it's mostly just systematic sales. And they're all pretty small sales too, like, you know, like five Bitcoin, two Bitcoin, seven Bitcoin, half a Bitcoin or so. Um, so, no, so, so nothing too crazy. So if we go back to the, you know, and this is, by the way, this is bitinfocharts.com, and we scroll down, there's plenty of wallets that you can follow. There's a lot of wallets, by the way, that, this is probably the same person, but they first accumulated um, back during the summer lull when, when the price was, you know, at around that $30,000 level. Uh, if you go to the second page and look at more wallets, there's also, there's also a lot of wallets that accumulated in late 2018 during that during that massive drop by Bitcoin that started in, in November of 2018 and then sort of finalized itself and final, we reached that final capitulation in December. And, and then they reaccumulated in, in, um, in July of 2021, uh, but haven't really done a whole lot since then, okay? Like if I if I just click and some of the wallets didn't actually accumulate anything in July, but if you if you go look at some of these wallets, like back in 2018, there was a lot of Bitcoin brought in on on December 4th, and then absolutely crickets until until the summer lull, where you can see another 1,600 or Bitcoin or so came in at a price of around thirty one thousand dollars. What's interesting is this first series of transfers in were at around three to four thousand, or close to four thousand dollars, and then the second series of transfers came in at around thirty-one thousand dollars. So, <laughs> talk about almost an order of magnitude and different in, in price difference between their first series of transfers in on the price based on the price of Bitcoin, and then their second series. They haven't done anything since then, right? Like even though Bitcoin has gone back down to thirty-three k not that long ago, we haven't actually seen anything change with these wallets. Now, some of the other ways that we can sort of understand this data is to actually go look at the on-chain data. And say, you know, if you look at at the number of uh, the, the the amount of Bitcoin supply held by addresses that hold between say one thousand to ten thousand Bitcoin, you can see that during the drop in December, this metric shot up, which is perhaps a good indication of of a of a capitulation event. Like if you have a lot of big a lot of big buys coming in, you know, a lot of whales coming in and, and really buying up the dip. That might be a good indication of, of a future capitulation whenever you know whenever those things occur. And, and then furthermore, in the same way that you can see the capitulation and the amount of Bitcoin held by supply or by addresses with at least 1,000, 10,000 Bitcoin shot up, then over here during this distribution phase, you can see that it went down. So you could argue that there were a lot of people, a lot of larger wallets that, that were scooping up Bitcoin at the lows back in December of 2018 were then offloading it over here during this first distribution phase. And then since then, despite the fact that we more or less had a second distribution phase, this has just been going sideways. So perhaps a good indicator of a of a future bull market would be would be when does this start going up again? Okay, that that, that might be one interesting thing. And then it, one of the things I was talking about earlier was looking at the, you know, the the hodl waves. Uh, I mean I didn't specifically mention the hodl waves, but if you look at say, you know, the amount of bitcoin held by, you know, held by people that have been holding it at least say six months to one year, you can see that distribution phase of long-term holders during during this mania phase back in the early part of 2021. But you don't see that same thing during November. And this is this is actually the category that I fall into myself. Like I took a lot of profits over here during this first one, but but not so much during the second one. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of in that boat. And then there's also that 2017 move where you can see that huge sell-off by long-term holders uh, and then it came back up you can see that the the double peak in 2013 there was like a 
a huge sell-off by long-term holders on both of them, whereas in this one, there was only a sell-off of long-term holders really during this first one. So that's, that's an interesting interesting thing to consider when, when looking at the on-chain data. So let me know what you guys think about these videos. You guys wanna see more updates of them? You know, Do you also sometimes ponder what would well number three do? I sometimes do, um, but you know, you can see here they, they recently picked up 412 Bitcoin. It's the most recent most recent action that they've taken. And um, we'll continue to follow these well gains as we, as we continue to navigate the cryptoverse. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, you can get access to, you know, to this website with all these on-chain stuff, social metrics, derivative charts, ROI charts, et cetera, uh, through into the cryptoverse.com. We still have the sale running, so you can lock in the lower rate as long as you do not cancel. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.